don't know the day or the hour when he's coming, but the Bible does say there'll be certain things that will take place in the world in the days before the return of the Lord Jesus. And uh, tonight we're going to look at some of those things which are happening, um, and God willing we may uh, do some more talks after this to give some more detail on events taking place in the last days before Jesus returns. The uh, Bible says that the last days before Jesus returns will actually be difficult days. It says there'll be times of great stress and trouble on the face of the earth. If we look in Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, uh, Jesus actually describes some of the things which will take place in those times. Um, Luke 21, verse 7, So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? What sign will there be when these things are about to take place? He said, Take heed that you do not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near. Therefore do not go after them, but when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines, and pestilences. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. For all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You'll be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. It will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You'll be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and some of them, they will put some of you to death. You'll be hated by all for my name's sake but not a hair of your head will be lost. By your patience, possess your souls. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the midst of her depart, and let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, and to those who are nursing babies in those days. For there will be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts fading them from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to him a parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees, when they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things which will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Uh, these are just some of the words which we find in the Gospel of Luke uh, when Jesus is speaking about his second coming. And uh, tonight I want to look at some of the issues relating to the second coming. And uh, as I say, we're going to show some video clips. These are not Christian video clips, they're just ones I've taken off the news, off the internet, uh, which relate to some of the things I'm going to be speaking about. So first of all, we're going to speak actually about the sign of Jerusalem. In that passage, it says that Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Uh, the Bible says that there'll be a return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel, and that there will be a uh, issue over Jerusalem. So let's just start off by reminding ourselves of something to do with Jerusalem and the land of Israel. And I'll comment on, would you show these films, then I'll comment on them and events which relate to the second coming. So, okay, Kion, you want to fire away? That film obviously was made by people who are enthusiastic about the fact that uh, Jewish people are back in the land of Israel and back in Jerusalem. Uh, in the Bible, we find that uh, there are prophecies which speak about the dispersion of the Jewish people to the nations of the earth. And in the last days, there are prophecies which speak about the return of the Jews to the land of Israel. And I believe that this is one of the signs which we have of the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> in, the, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 24, it says, 
concerning Israel, for I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you will dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. This is one of a number of prophecies which speak about the Jewish people returning to the land of Israel. Uh, Many commentators in the Bible have deduced from this that the Jewish people would return, first of all, not in faith to God, not in faith in Jesus, certainly, but would return to the land, that the land uh, would become a fertile land, that it would be a land uh, which would be cleansed from its filthiness, ultimately, and that they would come to know the Lord. Now, clearly, uh, I don't believe that we are at that stage yet, but we do see, remarkably, in our time, a return of the Jewish people from the nations of the earth to the land of Israel. And since 1967, we've seen the uh, Six-Day War, as a result of which Israel uh, gained control of Jerusalem and of the Western Wall and of the Temple Mount. And that, again, is a significant event as far as the Bible is concerned. Now, of course, the fact that Israel is back in the land doesn't mean that it's all hunky-dory and everything is lovely and that there is peace and safety. Because, as you know, at the present time, we see uh, Jerusalem, as the Bible says, as a burdensome stone burdening all of the nations, a a cause of concern for the nations in the world. And right now, the issue of who should rule over Jerusalem is something which is right on the heart of the agenda of the nations. And indeed, we have today a battle ready for uh, Jerusalem, a battle for uh, Israel, which is taking place all around us. Uh, When Israel gained control of the Western Wall, the old city of Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount, the leader of uh, the Israeli Defense Forces, Moshe Dayan, he said that we have regained our holiest places, never again to depart from them. Uh, That was his statement, and it's still the desire of the uh, people of Israel, particularly the Prime Minister of Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, who said that United Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Jerusalem has, always will be, and always will be ours. It will never again be divided or cut in half. Jerusalem will remain only under Israel's sovereignty. Uh, So there is a statement that Jerusalem will remain uh, under Israel's sovereignty. And yet, if you know what's happening in the world today, you'll know that that is actually being very much contested. And I believe that this is another Uh, sign actually that we're living in the last days, in the days before the return of the Lord Jesus. Uh, Right now, the uh, nations of the world, which include uh, the United Nations, the European Union, uh, the Russia, and the United States of America, are part of what's called a quartet of nations, which has come together with the idea of uh, sorting out who should rule over Jerusalem and who should rule over the land of Israel. And the idea which they have to resolve the Arab-Israeli conflict, the fact is that there should be a settlement between Israel and the Palestinians in which Israel has control over the western part of Jerusalem and over what is now uh, the pre-67 borders of Israel and the Palestinians should have control over the eastern part of Jerusalem, the old city of Jerusalem, and set up a Palestinian state. Uh, On the 19th of March this year, the members of the quartet met in Moscow and they made a statement which called for a settlement negotiated between the parties within 24 months that ends the occupation which began in 1967 and results in the emergence of an independent, democratic and viable Palestinian state living side by side in peace and security with Israel and its other neighbours. So that was a statement which was made this year and right now you can see that the uh, nations of the world actually are seeking to Uh, cause that to happen as Israel is engaged in peace talks with the Palestinians. Though one has to say that those peace talks have actually, at the present time, uh, appear to be breaking down over the issue of Israeli settlements in the West Bank, or Judea and Samaria. 
Be that as it may, Jerusalem is the center of the conflict. And it's also clear that as far as the Arab world is concerned, if Jerusalem uh, doesn't be divided, then uh, they want to have some kind of action against Israel to bring this to pass. Uh, The king of Jordan, King Abdullah, said that Israel faces an all-out war within 18 months if it does not come to terms with the Arab world and allow the establishment of a new Palestinian state with its capital in Jerusalem. Palestinians have said that Jerusalem has to return to its owners, and we are its owners. If not, he said, the term war cannot be erased from the lexicon of this region. So uh, you can see that the status of Jerusalem is an issue which is the present time uh, creating the potential for a conflict over who should rule over that city. Uh, In the Bible, we're told that Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone, in other words, a cause of concern for all nations, and that that is uh, written about in the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, where we read this word. Jerusalem will be a burdensome stone or a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered together against it. Uh, Again, this is something which the Bible says is going to happen in the last days of this age. So you see that Jerusalem will be a cause of concern for all of the nations. And uh, that is exactly where we are right now. Uh, One solution which has been proposed by the second in command, if you like, of Israel, Mr. Edhud Barak, is the following one, that he says that West Jerusalem and 12 Jewish neighborhoods that are home to 200,000 residents will be ours. The Arab neighborhoods, in which close to a quarter of a million Palestinians live, will be theirs. There will be a special regime in place, along with agreed-upon arrangements in the old city, the Mount of Olives, and the city of David. That's a slightly different version from what Mr. Netanyahu is saying. Um, But uh, what that would mean would be a division of Jerusalem, and that the holy places, the old city of Jerusalem and the holy places would then come under the control of some kind of uh, international administration which would uh, preserve them uh, for all of the peoples of the different uh, faiths to go and to worship in their shrines. Um, Well, people nodding their heads, but uh, in fact, the Bible does indicate that in the last days something along those lines may come to pass, that Israel may sign an agreement which will actually... Uh, create a supposed peace agreement but will actually lead to a time of trouble in the last days which will bring about the last conflict over the land of Israel. So uh, why do I mention these things? Because I believe that they are one of the signs of the last days that Jesus said that these things will be happening. And the fact that we see this happening is actually a preparation for the time when Jesus the Messiah will return. And according to the Bible, Jesus the Messiah is not going to return to uh, any other place on the earth except Jerusalem. It says that his feet are going to stand on the Mount of Olives outside Jerusalem and that then he will come to uh, take up his rule during the period which is known as the Millennial Kingdom in which the Messiah will reign from Jerusalem and there will be peace and justice uh, for all of the nations during that time. Uh, But at the present time, we can see that the events which are taking place in the Middle East actually tie in with what the Bible says will happen in the last days. Uh, Now, as I mentioned, there are those who would uh, be opposed to the existence of Israel. And we're just going to see another brief clip now, if uh, Q1 could put that on. A few hundred meters from a country Iran doesn't recognize. This is the closest the Iranian president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has ever been to Israel. And from a Lebanese village known for its long struggle with Israel, Ahmadinejad delivered a message his enemy would have heard loud and clear. Tehran will continue to support Hezbollah. The people of Iran will support you forever. You are like the unmovable mountain. We are proud of you, and we will keep on supporting you forever. 
But the 15-minute speech was moderate when compared to statements Ahmadinejad is known for. It is a sensitive time in Lebanon, where some parties considered the Iranian president's visit to the south as unwarranted provocation and a sign that Iran, through its ally Hezbollah, is using the border with Israel to pursue its agenda. The criticism, however, didn't stop him from visiting the region. Vintage Bail is a symbolic village. Ten years ago, as well as Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah delivered a victory speech at this stadium when Israel ended its 22-year occupation of southern Lebanon. It is now known as the capital of liberation and resistance following the 2006 war with Israel. Messages of defiance welcomed by Hezbollah's Shiite constituency. They say it was only normal to thank a man who supported them more than the Lebanese state. But others view Iran's backing of Hezbollah as undermining the state. Critics warned Ahmadinejad to act as the president of Iran and not the president of a part of Lebanon. A man known for his controversial statements, Ahmadinejad seemed to be avoiding controversy in what has been seen as a controversial visit. Zana Khudr, Al Jazeera, South Lebanon. So here we see a, another part of the Arab-Israeli situation, or this man actually is not an Arab, he's a Persian, but he is leader of Iran, Ahmadinejad. Uh, there are those who wish to see Israel removed and replaced by a Arab Muslim state, um, Israel removed from the map. Uh, and Iran's leader, Mr. Ahmadinejad, has called Israel a stinking corpse which should be wiped off the map. Um, he said, in fact, during his trip to Lebanon, I announce that the Zionist regime uh, is about to die and will soon be erased from the geographical scene. By that he means Israel. Today the time for the fall of the satanic power of the United States has come and the countdown to the annihilation of the emperor of power and wealth has started. Um, so he's not just seeking the end of Israel but also uh, to bring about the destruction of the United States. Um, interestingly, this man, Mr. Ahmadinejad, believes that there is going to come a great apocalyptic war in the last days, and they believe also that uh, we're heading for the end of this age. Uh, he believes that uh, a man who they call the Mahdi, who is actually some kind of messianic figure from the Islamic side, will come back and will lead the Muslims in a battle which will bring about the end of uh, Israel and will also bring the world into the control of the Islamic world. Um, the Mahdi is an Islamic Messiah figure who will lead the Muslims to defeat the great Satan, that's the United States, and the little Satan, Israel, and set up an Islamic world government. According to the Shiite belief held by Mr. Ahmadinejad, there will be a time of great trouble on the earth before the Mahdi arrives. Uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran says the world is now in its last days. It claims the Mahdi will first appear in Mecca, then Medina. He will conquer all of Arabia, Syria, Iraq, and destroy Israel. Then he will overcome his enemies and will eradicate all corruption and injustice from the face of the earth and establish the global government of peace, justice, and equity. Um, Israel, of course, is more than nervous about uh, this man, Ahmadinejad, and his claims. Um, Netanyahu has said that uh, their belief that this, the Mahdi would come back in a great apocalyptic war that will claim the lives of millions, and you don't really want Iran, the only country in the world with 90% Shiites, the most extreme part of this religious sect, to acquire the horrific weapons of atomic bombs and missiles to carry out their twisted ideology. Uh, so we have here uh, somebody who is seeking to destroy Israel, and that again is something which the Bible says will be happening in the last days of this age. There'll be those who will come with the intention to destroy Israel. Um, in Psalm 83, uh, it speaks about those who would say, come, let us wipe, out, wipe them out as a nation that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. Uh, so you have prophecies in the Bible which speak about those who come to seek to uh, wipe out Israel, to remove Israel from the map. Um, Ahmadinejad actually is seeking to get an alliance of countries which will confront Israel, including uh, southern Lebanon, the uh, Shiite Muslims in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and uh, Turkey. Uh, all those countries are at the present time in different stages, but uh, you can see that Turkey is actually moving much more towards a 
hostile position to Israel. Um, Iraq, present time, is uh, Americans are still there, but uh, Ahmadinejad is hoping that uh, once the Americans move out, the Iraqis will move much more into kind of a Shiite, uh, anti-Israel and anti-American position. And generally, the way in which the Middle East is going is in his direction at the present time. Uh, whether this will lead to an immediate war against Israel, uh, only the Lord knows, but the fact is that these countries are coming together with a hostility to Israel. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, we're told about a time coming when uh, nations to the north of Israel uh, will come against Israel. One of them is identified as Persia. Uh, others are uh, identified with countries which you can line up with uh, Turkey and uh, some have also said with Russia, which will come against Israel in the last days. And the fact that these countries are coming together today uh, is just a sign to me of the fact that we're living in the last days, that the events which lead up to the second coming of Jesus are taking place. This is another one of the signs of the second coming of the Lord as we see these countries coming together and we see this attempt to uh, come against Israel, to remove Israel from the map and to replace Israel with uh, an Islamic-based country which would uh, no longer have a Jewish majority or a Jewish population. As far as the Muslims are concerned, uh, once a country has been Islamic, it should remain Islamic until the end of days. And when Israel re re was reborn there in the Middle East as a nation, um, the issue of Islam perhaps was not on the agenda when they first set up Israel, but it certainly is on the agenda now as the Islamic countries would seek to remove Israel from being there. According to the Bible, when these things happen, uh, God is going to intervene and to save Israel from destruction. And right through the prophecies in the Bible, we see that uh, countries come against Israel, and yet Israel remains. I uh, don't know if you, well, you, if you don't know Hebrew, at the end of that first clip we showed, it had the words, Am Israel High, the people of Israel live. And we see that remarkably God has uh, brought Israel back to the land and preserved Israel as a people in the midst of the nations. God's purpose for Israel actually is that they should come not just physically back to the land, but also that the Jewish people should recognize that they have a savior in the person of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. And part of the problems of Israel today is because of not knowing God, not knowing the savior, not knowing Jesus as the Messiah. In the Bible, it does say that uh, there'll be a time of trouble According to Jeremiah, it says, We've heard a voice of trembling, of fear, not of peace. Ask now whether a man is ever in labor with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor, and all faces turn pale? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Uh, so a time of trouble will take place, but it also says here that he shall be saved out of it. And God's purpose in bringing Israel back into the land is that they should uh, come back to know him as well and to repent and believe the gospel to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as we look around us today, we can see that there appear to be very, perhaps, few signs of that taking place, of Israel looking to Jesus. And yet there are those in the land of Israel who are coming to believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And as we come into the last days of this age, uh, one of the purposes of God in this time is to bring the Jewish people to call upon the name of the Lord and to find salvation through Jesus, the Messiah. But the Bible does say that there'll be this time of trouble. And as we look around us today, we can see that there are things which are taking place in the Middle East which are preparing the way for the last day's troubles, uh, the conflicts which will take place in the Middle East and which will lead ultimately to the return of Jesus the Messiah. Uh, so I believe that the return of the Jewish people is a sign of the second coming of Christ. Uh, Jesus said, uh, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when you see them uh, bearing fruit, you know that summer is near. Uh, there is a sense in which the fig tree does actually speak about the rebirth of Israel as a nation. If you look in the book of Jeremiah, you'll find that the 
Uh, there is a picture in Jeremiah 24 of the, the basket of the figs, uh, the figs which are bad and the figs which are good. Uh, the bad figs actually speak about the removal of Israel from the land, the coming desolation which would come. And the good figs speak about the restoration and the return of the Jewish people to the land following the Babylonian captivity. It's interesting, if you look in the New Testament, Jesus used the same image of the fig tree. Um, in, uh, he spoke about the cursing of the fig tree and following that, the national life of Israel withered and Israel went into the nations. He then spoke about the blossoming of the fig tree and he said, when you see this blossoming of the fig tree, Israel reborn as a nation, that will be a sign to you that Jesus is coming back again. Uh, it will also be a sign to the nations of their hostility to the Lord Jesus and to God and his purposes and that they will seek to come against Israel, to destroy Israel and to remove them from the land. Uh, so as we look at these things happening, we can say that these are signs of the coming, second coming of Jesus. These things will be taking place in those days before he returns. Uh, now, uh, there's another issue which I want to look at, which I believe is a sign of the second coming. Uh, that is uh, what is taking place amongst the nations. Uh, in the nations of the world, uh, Jesus says, first of all, that uh, it'll be as in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot. Uh, if you look in the Bible, you'll find that in the days of Noah, uh, they were days of great violence. Uh, and he says that the earth was filled with violence. Every imagination of the heart of man was only evil continually. In the uh, days of Lot, it was also days of great uh, immorality sexually and days in which uh, homosexuality was actually imposed upon the people of Sodom. And the Bible implies that these will be things that will be taking place in the last days uh, before Jesus returns. Uh, so there will be, a, uh, in one sense, society falling apart uh, with violence, with immorality all around us. But the Bible also implies that in the last days there will be a coming together of nations as well. And uh, one of the things which we are seeing in our time is the uh, fact that the nations are coming together. I um, want to just uh, have another little show if we can. Q1. Okay, there's all the big cities and the big nations of the world. Um, you know anything about all those cities? What did you see in them all? Skyscrapers, yeah? yeah? Big buildings. It reminds one of the Tower of Babel, yeah? But um, those nations were there were actually the G20. Um, the G20 is made up of those 19 countries plus the European Union. And they're actually going to be having a conference next month in the land of Korea. Um, what's interesting about all these nations is that they're all coming together into what you might call a new world order uh, to order and to rule the global economy. Uh, there's a process taking place which is to seek to bring this global governance to pass. Um, I just want to bring you one or two quotations here from what's taking place amongst the nations. Um, first of all, in our part of the world, here in the European Union, the European heads of state came together earlier this uh, last year to choose the first president of the European Union, a man called Herman Van Rompuy. And he said, as he was appointed, 2009 is the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. Climate conference in Copenhagen, another step towards the global management of our planet. Our mission is one of hope supported by acts and deeds. Uh, an attempt to bring together the nations uh, into a global government. Uh, in the European Union area, the uh, problems of the economic sphere uh, have caused them to say that we need to come together into a euro area with a, in which we make monetary union work. The European Commissioner, a man called... Jose Manuel Barroso said, you can't have a monetary union without having an economic union. Member states should have the courage to say whether they want an economic union or not. And if they don't, it's better to forget monetary union altogether. Interestingly, outside the European Union building, uh, there is a statue of a woman being carried off by a bull 
picture of the Greek myth of the rape of Europa, but it's a woman riding a beast, a picture which you have in Revelation chapter 17. Uh, the European Union uh, Parliament building shows the Tower of Babel, and it's based on the painting of the Tower of Babel. When they were asked by a secular journalist why the Tower of Babel, a European official said what they failed to complete 3,000 years ago, we in Europe will finish now. Uh, so it's a coming together of the nations to build a unified Europe. Um, it's having its difficulties, of course, at the present time with the economic sphere, but I believe that it's part of the progress which we're seeing in the world today towards the unification of nations into global, uh, a global structure. Uh, a man called Jan Timmerman wrote uh, a United Nations development report saying mankind's problems can no longer be solved by national governments. What is needed is a world government. That this can best be achieved by strengthening United Nations systems. In some cases, this would mean changing the role of UN agencies from advice giving to implementation. Uh, even the Pope has actually called for this to happen. Uh, the Pope said that uh, he called for a true political world authority to manage the affairs of the world. At the same time, the Pope warns that such an international order could become a dangerous universal power of tyrannical nature, must be guarded against somehow. Now, this is interesting in relation to what's taking place with the G20 summit, which will be taking place in Seoul in Korea. Um, the G20 nations have described themselves as the global premier forum for forging global economic cooperation. Uh, the, they say that the global economy is too closely interwoven to be independent from one another. A nation or a region alone cannot work out its own problems. Thus, international cooperation has become indispensable, and the role of the G20 as premier forum for global economic discussions has significantly grown in importance. So there is a call for a globalized world system. Uh, in fact, the, one of the things which they're going to discuss is the possibility of creating some kind of a global, uh, global currency. The UN report has also called for abandoning the U.S. dollar as main global reserve currency and supporting a plan of the International Monetary Fund to set up what they call special drawing rights to replace the dollar as the global reserve currency and eventually create a global currency called the Bancor. The new global currency will be issued by a new global central bank that would have authority to levy taxes. Uh, well, if you set up a global currency with a global bank, you'd actually need some kind of a global government to oversee it. And what you can see taking place around the world is steps towards this taking place. Um, at the G20 summit, it's going to be discussed, and the G20 have described themselves as being the uh, countries that represent 90% of global trade, two-thirds of the world's population. Um, so what you're seeing happening is countries coming together in a desire to manage the global economy. Now, you might say, well, this doesn't seem to be happening very effectively, but the fact that it's happening at all is a sign, I believe, of the last days of nations coming together. Uh, in the book of Daniel, it says about the uh, ten kings who give their power to the beast, uh, and in the book of Revelation as well. Uh, so there'll be a coming together of nations and some kind of a global government in the last days of this age. In Daniel chapter 2, the king of Babylon, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, had a dream of a great image with a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, legs of iron, and feet partly of iron and clay. Uh, and the feet partly of iron and clay, uh, many Bible commentators have said in the last days, is a picture of the last days world government uh, that will be made up of nations which are either partly strong and partly weak, but will manage the world economy. Out of this would come a leader, one who come out of a revived Roman Empire, according to uh, one interpretation of what happens in the last days. Uh, if you see the European Union actually as a revived Roman Empire, you could see uh, a leader coming out of that area who would be a one who will bring about the uh, final world government uh, of uh, Revelation chapter 13. Uh, in Revelation, uh, this one known as the beast is given power by Satan, that's the dragon, 
and he rules for 42 months, three and a half years, and the last half of that period is the time of the Great Tribulation. This movement towards globalization, towards uh, some kind of a world government, is another sign of the last days of this age. Of course, one of the problems which is facing the world because of the uh, growth of technology and of the uh, is the problems of the environment. And this is going to be another issue which I believe is a sign of the last days of this age. Perhaps, uh, Q1, you could throw the next one up. Any flash flood has the potential to kill, but this one is particularly dangerous. The torrent sweeping through this Hungarian village is coloured dark red because it's packed with hazardous chemicals. The village was one of three inundated after a dam holding byproducts from an aluminium plant burst, releasing hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of toxic waste. From the air, the scale of the disaster becomes clear. More than 400 homes have been flooded. Even once the liquid had swept through, streets were paved with toxic mud. The height of the flood wave clearly visible on battered buildings. Residents rushing for higher ground, fearing more waste was on its way. With many still missing, the exact death toll remains unclear. The waste is highly corrosive. Along with the dead, dozens of people were injured, some of them in a serious condition. This woman describes how the sludge burned her legs and chest. Medical officials say skin and eye injuries have been widespread. The Hungarian government has demanded answers. We have no information about it. We do not know of any sign of a natural cause for this catastrophe. So we think it is a disaster caused by humans. Everyone in this country wants to know who is accountable for this tragedy and the property damage. The company which owns the dam says the red sludge isn't classified as hazardous by European Union standards. But it's unlikely crops will be grown here anytime soon. And with the cleanup, there's a rush to contain the chemicals here before they can filter downstream and pollute one of Europe's largest waterways, the Danube. Andrew Potter, Al Jazeera. Right, another event taking place in the world, and we can see that it, in the Bible it does say that in the last days that the earth is going to be polluted under its inhabitants. Uh, one of the effects of industrialization is the need to. Uh, burn fossil fuels to create uh, all the electricity that we need to keep the system going and to keep everything moving in our society. Uh, all of these things have an effect on the world around us. Now, there are many people who actually don't believe the global warming theory. Um, I'm not dismissive of the idea that we could be changing the uh, environment because of the burning of uh, fossil fuels. Uh, but I do believe that these things are signs of the last days, that there will be a problem in the environment in the world round about us, and that in the uh, very end of this age, there's going to be a time when uh, there'll be a tremendous destruction upon the earth uh, in the Great Tribulation period. In the book of Revelation, uh, chapters... Well, if we look in the last year, we've seen a number of natural disasters... There have been earthquakes in Haiti and Chile causing great destruction and loss of life. Uh, there was the uh, volcano in Iceland which caused uh, billions of dollars in economic damage. Uh, then came the oil spill disaster in the Gulf of Mexico which caused one third of the Gulf waters to be off limits to fishing. Uh, also this year we've seen catastrophic floods in Pakistan and also in China bringing massive destruction to life and property and agriculture. At the same time, Russia has endured a lethal heat wave, causing forests to burn down and crops to be destroyed. There are those who are saying that uh, the weather cataclysms are a sign of climate change. Russia's heat wave and the wildfires and the record deluge devastating Pakistan fit international scientists' projection of more frequent and more intense extreme weather events due to global warming, according to World Meteorological Organization. The UN's network of climate scientists have long predicted that globe, rising global temperatures would produce more frequent and intense heat waves, more intense rainfall. The IPCC re 
predicted a doubling of disastrous droughts in Russia this year and cited studies foreseeing catastrophic fires during dry years. There are those who disagree with this and say that these things are simply part of a natural cycle, but the very fact that these events are taking place uh, with greater uh, intensity in, in these days is another sign of the last days. Uh, you can't actually deny that uh, burning coal and oil is dirty and pollutes the atmosphere. Uh, in fact, in China in particular, with the massive population it has, the world is facing possibility of there being two billion more cars in the world, ever more coal fire power stations poisoning the atmosphere. China's pollution is already huge. Air pollution alone is blamed for hundreds of thousands of deaths each year. Nearly 500 million people lack access to safe drinking water. Chinese cities are often wrapped in a toxic grey cloud. Only 1% of this country's 560 million city dwellers breathe air considered safe by the European Union. Now, here in the West, we are dependent on the continuous supply of electricity and oil to maintain our food supply uh, and our transport system and so on. If these things were to run out, it would cause enormous changes and problems to our society. In fact, that's one of the issues which the government at the present time is concerned about. Uh, according to a report in the newspaper recently, it showed that the UK government is concerned about an impending supply crisis in uh, fuel to keep the uh, economic system going. According to The Guardian, the Bank of England and the British Ministry of Defence are working alongside industry representatives to develop a crisis plan to deal with the possible shortfalls in energy supply. So these are issues which are taking place in the world today. As I've said in the Bible, there are significant passages which point to natural disasters in the seven-year period of the Great Tribulation which will precede the second coming of Christ to the earth. A number of these tie in with conditions being predicted today as a result of climate change. Um, in Luke chapter 21, it describes the distress of nations as the sea and the waves are roaring. This could have a literal application to huge storms or rising sea levels affecting nations. Uh, in Revelation 8, it says about the third of the trees are burned up. In Revelation 16, verse 9, it says men were scorched with great heat. Uh, already we see abnormal heat waves causing massive destruction forests around the world. Revelation 16, verse 12, speaks of the river Euphrates being dried up, and Isaiah 9 also speaks about the river Ni uh, 19, speaks about the river Nile drying up. Uh, the river Nile and the Euphrates are two great rivers uh, known to the biblical world. Uh, so this could indicate a general drying up of rivers worldwide. One of the effects of increased carbon in the atmosphere is increased acidification in the sea, which is threatening the mass extinction of marine species. Revelation 8, it says, a third of the living creatures in the sea died. Uh, so these um, events taking place are also signs, I believe, of the coming of the Lord and of the second coming. So if you look at all these things, you can see that there are many things happening in the world today which are uh, in line with what the Bible says will be happening in the days before Jesus returns. The hope for the world actually is in the second coming of Jesus, that Jesus will come again and he will judge the world in righteousness and he will bring about a true new world order in which there will be his rule from Jerusalem, there will be peace and justice in the nations and the Lord will reign and bring an end to this present evil age and bring in the glorious age of the Lord's return. Uh, the Bible actually tells us that we need to be ready for the second coming of Jesus. We need to ask him to save our souls. We need to repent of our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible also tells us that this day will come as a thief in the night, uh, unexpectedly, that there will be a day coming when Jesus will return uh, and it says in the Bible that he will come down from heaven with a shout. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive will be caught up to meet him as he comes in the clouds of heaven. Uh, so there is a day coming when those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ are going to be caught up to meet him and will be with him forever. Um, if we look around us today, we can see many signs that we're getting near to the time of the second coming of Jesus. In fact, if you believe that the second coming of Jesus comes before the rapture, 
before the tribulation, then the second coming of Christ could come at any time. And that is what I believe, in fact. The Bible tells us that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and that then uh, Jesus will return. Uh, Those who are alive at that time will be caught up to meet him, and will be gathered to him, and will be with him, and will come back with him when he turned the second time, uh, and will be part of that glorious time when Jesus will rule and reign over the earth and restore the earth to what it should have been in the first place. Uh, So uh, these are some of the things which are taking place in the world around us. Uh, Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Uh, Today we do see the things which the Bible says will happen in the last days beginning to take place. Uh, We don't see the uh, world government, which I've spoken of yet, Uh, but if you look around you, you can see that there are signs that this is in embryo. It's coming to pass. It will come about. In fact, there will be really only one world government in the last days of this age, um, which will rule over the nations of the earth. And that will be ruled by, the Bible says, is the beast or the Antichrist. Uh, Now, we don't know how long we have before that takes place. But the Bible does tell us that when we see these things beginning to happen, we should look up and lift up our heads because our redemption is drawing near. We see Israel back in the land. We see the nations uh, coming together. Uh, We see those who would seek to destroy Israel. And we see the battle over Jerusalem. Um, All of these things tie up with what the Bible says will happen in the last days of this age. In the light of that, um, our hope should be to trust in Jesus. There's a time of judgment and trouble coming on the earth. That judgment and trouble will come because people have rejected the one true God and his Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Now is actually the day of salvation. So if we put our trust in Jesus and believe on him, uh, we can know that we do have uh, forgiveness of our sins and we have eternal life. Uh, We can know also that as we uh, trust in him, he will help us in the days to come. uh, Because if we believe on the Lord Jesus, he's never going to leave us or forsake us. And we can know that he will uh, help us through the times which come. There may be difficult times ahead of us. Uh, The nearer we get to the time of the Great Tribulation, the more difficult it's going to become in the face of the on the earth. Uh, But there will be... uh, peace and security for those who believe in Jesus. And finally, when he comes again, when he comes to the earth, uh, he will bring about the end of this age of conflict, of trouble, and he will begin uh, a time in which there will be true peace and safety as Jesus reigns over the earth. And the same Lord Jesus, the Bible tells us, who was taken up from heaven, from earth to heaven, will come to the earth and he'll come Uh, in fulfillment of the prophecies of the Bible. According to Zechariah chapter 12, uh, he'll come at a time when there is a conflict over Jerusalem. Zechariah also says that uh, then the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon the people of Israel. They will look upon me whom they have pierced and mourn for him as for an only son and recognize that Jesus is the Savior, believe on him, And then according to Zechariah chapter 14, he will stand on the Mount of Olives uh, and he will become king over all the earth in that time. Uh, Same thing applies to Revelation chapter 19 where it says that Jesus will come uh, with all the saints and that he will then come to the earth and Satan will be bound during a thousand year period in which Jesus will reign and rule the earth as it should be. So if you want to be part of that glorious time, now is the day to put your trust in Jesus. Believe on him. uh, Allow him to be your saviour and your Lord. Uh, Jesus died for our sins the first time in fulfilment of prophecy. He is coming back the second time to judge the world in righteousness. And the Bible tells us that God commands all people everywhere to repent because he's appointed a day in which he will judge the world and he has uh, given assurance of this by raising Jesus from the dead. Jesus, the Saviour who died once, is coming back again 
as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And know that as we look at what's happening today, we can see the signs that we're living in the days which will lead up to his second coming. So I believe we are living in the last days. How long we have before all of these things come to pass, only God knows. Uh, But uh, many people are alarmed and concerned about the future. Perhaps even today you've had some bad news. I don't know if the spending review for the government may have been good news or bad news for you, but probably it's more likely to be bad news than good news. Uh, But today we see things which are causing people to be shaken and to be nervous about the future, uh, to be concerned. Um, If we trust in the Lord, we know that we have a glorious future, a glorious hope. And uh, the Bible tells us that if we trust in him, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ. And he will be with us in this earth. He will take us to be with him at the time when he returns for his church, for those who believe in him. And one day we'll be with him uh, in glory and we will know his presence forever and ever. So trust in the Lord.